Hey everyone, Ms. Go Electric here. Today I'm in Las Vegas for the 2023 Consumer Electronics Show. I am so excited to be here because this is one of my favorite events of the year. Now I cover everything that you can drive, fly, and ride that's electric. And I think there's gonna be a ton to explore here in the show this year. I really wanna thank the Consumer Technology Association for inviting me here and awarding me the Trailblazer Media Award. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible for me to come and show you guys everything that there is to explore as far as e-mobility goes. So let's go inside and get down to exploring. CES is consistently among the world's largest technology showcases. This year, there were over 115,000 industry attendees visiting over 3,200 exhibitors. 300 exhibitors were vehicle related, making CES 2023 one of the largest auto shows globally. In fact, 60% of the Fortune 500 companies were there and their announcements were covered by 4,800 global media from 69 countries, including our team at Miss Go Electric. There were countless startups exhibiting too. I managed to visit a few promising e-mobility brands, including Moonbikes. This electric snow bike company is based in France and I spoke with the CEO for an extended interview. I also spotted Verge Motorcycles and had the chance to speak to the founder and CEO of this European electric motorcycle brand about how they're planning to sell in the US soon and the unique design of the rear hub motor on their TS model. That extended interview is linked in the description below as well. I'm here at the Acoma booth and they have this really cool folding <laughs> electric bike and it's called the Tatamel bike. And what's really neat about it is that it just really gets compact, but instead I can sit on it, so let's sit on it. <laughs> I'm so tall. <laughs> this is so cool. It has a twist throttle, looks like mechanical brakes. Very simple machine, a nice little computer right in front of me. I got a rear view mirror, big bright uh, LED light up there in the front. If you go camping, you can take this with you and you can use this as like a movie screen to watch movies while you're camping. So that is really cool. 3999, so just about $4,000. So they don't sell them yet, but they um, are from Japan. So they'll be coming here pretty soon, it seems like. Wow, this is so cool. All right, this is really interesting. Behind me, there is a booth that is showcasing a wearable that you can put on your feet, and it's like mini skateboards for each foot, and they're electric. So when you start walking and go with your stride, they'll start to motorize and power you. This product is a, is a mobility uh, device uh, that allows you to uh, double your walking speed. You just have to walk uh, as usual and uh, you automatically uh, double your walking speed without the uh, problem of securities, of, uh, you just walk. Just walk. <laughs> just walk. Electrification was central to the John Deere exhibit. The farm machinery behemoth revealed their first all-electric excavator. Cleaning up the most heavily used machine on the job site is a powerful start towards their goal of introducing more than 20 electric and hybrid electric construction models by 2026. As a side note, John Deere acquired a majority stake of Austrian battery supplier Kreisel Electric in February of 2022. Kreisel Electric is known for their immersion cooling battery technology and has partnerships with Swedish electric boat company Exshore and will be supplying batteries for the E1 high performance electric hydrofoil boat racing series that kicks off this year. There were many charging infrastructure companies showcasing new hardware. Among those, I saw Freewire, Autel, and others, but this time I spent time asking tough questions to some of the established players, including Blink and SK Signet. You can see my interviews with Blink's CEO, Brandon Jones, and SK Signet America's president, SJO, at the link in the description. We talked a lot about public network reliability and how the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program will improve the charging experience for EV owners. Mercedes had several electric vehicles on display, including their concept EQXX. I don't like spending too much time talking about concepts, but the EQXX is more than a design exercise. This working vehicle has reportedly achieved a rear world over 700 miles of range on a single charge. 
This was achieved with a sub 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, an average speed of 52 miles per hour, and an incredible drag coefficient of just 0.17 are among the factors Mercedes can credit for the efficiency. During CES, Mercedes also announced extended partnerships with ChargePoint and MN8 to install 400 fast charging hubs across the United States. 2,500 new CCS DC fast charging ports cannot come soon enough. MNA Energy, a unit of Goldman Sachs Asset Management, is a renewable energy company deploying solar and energy storage solutions for their clients. This project will rely upon ChargePoint hardware and software. Within the next seven years, Mercedes has said they will transition to exclusively electric new automobile sales where market conditions allow. I'm here at the Smart Eye booth in what a surprise, the Polestar 3 is here. We're gonna actually go sit inside it. This is really exciting because if you guys don't know, I actually launched the Polestar 2 when that came out and I was part of the team to take it around North America and parts of Europe and present it to the market. So I'm really excited to see the SUV come to life because this was just a rumor back when I was working with them. But let's walk around the backside here, take a look. This five-seater all-electric performance vehicle is on the SPA2 platform, a 400-volt architecture which includes a 111 kilowatt-hour battery pack filled with prismatic cells. The initial launch edition of the Polestar 3 will be available in a long-range dual motor setup or long-range dual motor with a performance pack. Really beautiful interior in here, and a couple things I'm noticing is that, yes, we have that big screen in the center stack just like in the Polestar 2, and a Google operating system. So really easy to use voice commands wise, very beautiful display. I love the materials in this so far from what I'm seeing. And what's unique about this one in particular is that this is actually gonna be a five seater and it's gonna produce over 500 horsepower and we're hoping about 300 miles of range, which I think is gonna be pretty good for this. A few standout features on the Polestar 3 includes active air suspension, soft closed doors with auto presenting handles, Android Automotive OS with 5G internet connectivity and over the air updates, head up display, and a 25 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system with headrest speakers that allow drivers to receive prompts for navigation or answer calls without disrupting the passenger's listening experience. Very spacious back here too. I have a ton of leg room and I didn't have to move that seat up there to provide more leg room when I was sitting up front. So as you can see, if you're 5'11 and got long legs like me, check. <laughs> I'm also noticing that we got the Swedish gold seat belts here. This probably has the performance pack then. And do we see, yep, Swedish gold valve caps. And we got the brakes up front here. I would have to guess those are Brembo's just like on the Polestar 2. And this is a very interesting design note here on the front. This almost acts more like a wing, so that brings the airflow. Very nice aerodynamic profile on this car, and it's just stunning in my opinion. And you'll also notice back here, it's kind of the same concept where you have this wing opening here so that the airflow can come out the back. To optimize efficiency, the Polestar 3 has a heat pump and can decouple the rear motor when in the normal drive mode. The motion activated lift gate reveals rear cargo that offers about 17 cubic feet with the seats up and including under the floor 50 cubic feet with the seats folded and a small frunk with 1.1 cubic feet of space. There will also be an optional luminar lidar that can see up to 820 feet away. The Polestar 3 will initially be built in Chengdu, China in mid 2023 with first deliveries taking place in Q4 of 2023. Production will begin in Ridgeville, South Carolina in mid-2024, which is likely to help the vehicle qualify for manufacturing subsidies. MSRP for the long-range dual motor will start at $83,900. I have been anxiously awaiting this vehicle and I'm looking forward to driving one as soon as I can. One of the Geely family sister vehicles to the Polestar 3 was also on display at CES, the Volvo EX90. Well, look what I found here. We have the Volvo 
EX90. This is an up to seven seater all electric SUV that they have coming out on the SPA2 platform. This is actually going to give some really great specifications in my opinion, up to 250 kilowatt charging, 111 kilowatt hour battery pack. We'll see what that means for the United States as far as range goes, but I'm really liking the design of this and I cannot wait till it comes out. The EX90 bears many similarities to the Polestar 3, but Volvo's offering delivers greater towing capacity. It will have plug and charge capabilities, phone key support, and Google HD map support for semi-autonomous driving features, including lane changes and hands-free driving. As far as the interior goes, I believe this is where legacy automakers like Volvo have the opportunity to capture market share. Quality materials, fit and finish, and intuitive systems will be an attractive alternative to Tesla's Spartan approach to cabin design. The EX90 and Polestar 3 are both great examples of competitive electric SUVs coming to the market for 2023 and 2024. Although they may be pricey for the average consumer, more options for differing lifestyles are still needed in the EV space. The EX90 will have a starting price under $80,000, which may potentially allow it to qualify for the federal EV tax incentive. What are your thoughts on the Polestar 3 and the Volvo EX90? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I did not expect to see Geely's brand Zeker on display at CES. It was a great surprise to see the all-electric 001 model on display at the Mobileye exhibit. Zeker and Mobileye are collaborating on autonomous driving technology, especially applicable in highway situations. If the Zeker looks rather familiar, you might have seen a similar Link & Co variation. Both are part of the Geely family of automobile brands. Link & Co is a radical automotive brand which utilizes a subscription platform instead of traditional car ownership. I sat down with the CEO of Link & Co, Alan Visser, and linked the interview in the description below. We briefly stopped at the Rise booth where the Recon electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle was on display. Demonstration flights took place outside of the convention center, but we didn't catch one. A representative told me that Recon has six independent motors and six removable batteries. The 300 pound eVTOL is constructed with an aluminum frame and carbon fiber propellers and can fly up to 400 feet high while carrying a max payload of up to 250 pounds. The top speed is 63 miles per hour and has a maximum range of 25 miles. The company is based out of Mason, Ohio. They designed the recon for farmers and ranchers to be able to inspect crops and round up livestock. There is no license needed to operate it since it's considered an ultralight aircraft. The price is expected to be around $150,000. Whether for single passenger use or commercial application, there are many varieties of eVTOLs in development set to hit the market soon. If successful, they will reduce passenger vehicle congestion on the roads and expand regional mobility, offering rapid access to remote or areas with difficult topography. Which eVTOL companies are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below. Volkswagen staged a soft launch of the ID7 at CES. This will be the sixth model from the ID line built on the MEB platform, and it is one of 10 new EVs Volkswagen is planning to launch by 2026. The ID7 electric sedan is the evolution of the ID Aero concept, which Volkswagen revealed last summer in China. This is still a pre-production model and included a special camouflage that had smart lighting effects through electroluminescence. The production version of the ID7 will be unveiled during the second quarter this year. Ram's concept Rev 1500 was one of the most publicized vehicle reveals of the show. It's clearly a concept vehicle. Ram showed off the pre-production version about a month later with a Super Bowl commercial. Many of the exciting concept features were removed and we are still waiting on more details regarding specifications. Ram has said that when the vehicle hits the market, it will have class leading towing, range, and payload. They also mentioned it would have vehicle to home power delivery capabilities. The Ram team also said they'd offer an available gasoline powered range extender on this truck. The exhibit also featured a Roomba style autonomous wireless charger concept. Over the last few years at CES, Sony has showcased EV concepts to build and gauge interest. Now, they've joined forces with Honda to bring a product line to global markets in 2026. This is the first concept from Sony Honda Mobility Inc., and the brand will be called Afila. A production model based on this prototype is in development with pre-orders planned to begin in the first half of 2025. 
Sales are scheduled to start in 2025 with delivery from spring in 2026 in North America. Sony says they will likely manufacture the production versions at Honda's new Ohio facility. An SUV will follow, then another sedan, and potentially a minivan. I am here representing Sony Honda Mobility uh, right here in the Sony CES 2023 booth and uh, showcasing our brand new prototype car, the Aphila. Autonomous driving is all about safety. As we transition from, I sound funny saying it, but traditional driving to autonomous driving, it's all about how safe can you be. The Avila has 45 internal and external cameras and sensors to deliver level two plus or level three autonomous driving safety. Now, when you do have that level of safety, it now becomes about the in-cabin experience. And the Afila introduces HMI or human machine interface, which brings all of the entertainment that Sony has to offer right into the cabin. Well, that's it for my coverage here at the Consumer Electronics Show for 2023. I could spend days here and I wish I had more time to, but I gotta get back to Detroit for some more projects. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.